We, uh, Yo, welcome to The Fix. You're here with myself and co-host Daniel McGee. We're doing a solo dolo thing tonight. Uh, I want to do a quick mic check before we get started, as we are notorious for having incidents messing with OBS. <laughs> true. So, true, true, true. family in the chat, let me know if you can hear myself and Daniel McGee. Hello. I realized I should probably say something at that point. Huh? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a unspoken cue. Could have, could have been more on the ball. With that one. <laughs> yeah, guys, can you hear us? Let us know if you can hear us really quick, so we can we can get started. And shout out to everybody in the chat. What's up, Mister Joanna Dark? What's up, Spider? What's up, Red Wolf? Uh, photo mode. That blue number, my girl. The homie. Who else do we have here? Okay, they say they can hear us. Uh, nice. Yeah, Adidas twenty zero. What's up, my Chicago brother? Um, yeah. Okay, and Jack. It was a Jacks. Okay, hey, Palpy team. Okay, he can hear us though. We're good. That's that. That much is certain. Okay. So What's I was up, I was just on the KY Bob show, and he had the incident we usually have, which is OBS will switch once they update. They'll switch your mic to a oh, different yeah. mic. Yeah, Red Wolf said he was expecting cameras. Well, you expected too much, my good sir. <laughs> we have what type of show you think we're running here, huh? But no, we'll get back to it. We'll get to that eventually. Um, yeah. But hey guys, thank you all for being here. We had a a few like a week or so off. I of course made the faux pas, if you will, of of sleeping throughout <laughs> the first <laughs> half of the previous week and that delayed us still until this week so all my fault it was a bit of a thing where i was like you know you wake up grumpy and i'm like what happened and i'm trying to scramble yeah and you know so i'm you know danny i hit you up like hell what happened did you take my <laughs> what's guess what's going on what's yeah. happening i'm like what year you? is it i'm like i know you didn't take my damn guess and then uh, yeah, so yeah. it was a long thing about that but it was at the end of the day i had the cooler heads had to prevail and i i, I realized that was my misstep so i overslept it is what it is this is AI Umbra talking. You're correct. Uh oh, Jay. we What's replaced up, him with AI. Exactly. <laughs> he, he's actually slept in today, too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, without further ado, Danny, what have you been up to, brother? And uh, what um, what games have you been playing? Or uh, media so have you been watching, it's... I guess? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I'll start with what I've been watching, actually, because it'll be new. Everything else I've been doing is older. Uh, I, I started watching the first season of zom 100 the ah, bucket list of the dead yeah i've watched that it's pretty pretty interesting it's pretty fun it's not like amazing i wouldn't like you know i don't think you're gonna find it on many people's like anime of the year lists from last year uh but it's it's fun and goofy in a way that i wasn't necessarily expecting it to be and like the first episode is really relatable where he's like oh no there's a zombie apocalypse wait 
I don't have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm exactly. like, hell yeah, dude, let's go. <laughs> Look at the silver linings, right? Yeah. Like, uh, it, it's pretty fun like that. I, I just, I've had been having a lot of fun with that. But uh, yeah, game wise, all I've been playing is I started messing around with Lethal Company a little bit um with some friends of mine i think it's a fun game but it's also not a good game if that makes sense like it's it's yeah. like it, it's one of those games where it's just like it's super jank and super broken and like just not particularly well built but that's where the fun comes from you know because like you and your friends just kind of chuckle head around and <laughs> and just like get into terrible situations because nothing carries over between runs anyway so it doesn't really matter if you even win oh wow uh so there there's this one there was this bit where uh, there's a monster who like tracks you based on your sound and uh me and my friend sky were in the ship just like standing around waiting for it to leave because it was it was like in the ship staring at us and it like oh. turned around and started walking out but one of the uh one of the random items that we had like found from our scavenging was uh one of those like clown horns that's like burp, burp, like those ones right uh so i went and i grabbed it off the ground and sky just like slow turns and looks at me and i go burp, burp. <laughs> and he goes running <laughs> back in and gets him <laughs> and he's like you son of a bitch <laughs> i've seen that game like on tiktok they'll post it and the and that monster is like yeah hearing you or listening for you and you'll walk around and yeah is that that must be the same game i'm guessing yeah it, it's a it's a really fun game but it's also a really bad game is basically what i'm coming away uh, coming away from it with uh, and then other than that, I've just been, I, I finished act two of Baldur's Gate. Uh, and it feels mm. like the game is finally starting, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, like, I'm starting to really see the seams of the game where you talk to people about, oh my God, there's so many options of what you can do and you can tackle anything in any way. And every single time that someone <laughs> talks about that, they'll talk about the first big like hurdle of the game, which is this goblin camp. Uh, and the reason I think that they're talking about that <laughs> part of the game is because it's the only part of the game where that is true. <laughs> like, <laughs> like every other thing that I've run into, you have like three or four options. Like you have a decent amount of options, I guess, but it's just like you have different ways of getting to the same ending, if that makes sense. It's like yeah. there are seven doors to this room and some of those doors open in different ways, but like mm. it's, it's all kind of the same. Speaking of that, it's like a bunch of endings for this game, I've heard, right? Like a... I, I don't know for sure yet, but yeah, I would think so. Um, but it's it's this really weird situation where like Act 1 feels like it's just like kind of wheel spinning and world building, uh, which I guess is important for people who don't know anything about the Dungeons & Dragons universe, like the Sword Coast or whatever. But you feel like you never really accomplish anything in that first act. And then Act 2 is like a very narrow like streamlined this is exactly what you're going to do the situation where like you really don't have a lot of choices like i i came into this game being told like it, if you think of a way to solve a problem that you would like the way that you would solve it if you were actually playing D, &D you can do that and that is objectively not true um pretty much every single time that i've been like i'm gonna do it this way that hasn't worked um to the point where it's like hey why can i not just talk to this character or like, I just saved this character's life. Why is he trying to attack me? Why do I not have a speech <laughs> check to make him like calm down? Right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's relax, so many... sir. I just saved your life. Oh, there's a situation where there's a a spectator who's basically a, a a beholder but weaker, who has petrified a bunch of drow, and this is like right at the end of Act One. And as you fight him, he unfreezes those drow, but they've got like a like a brain control on them. But if you hit them, it, it snaps them out of it. So I was like, okay, mm. cool. I'm going to have him unpetrify all these guys. And then I'll break them out of their, their brain control so that they'll fight with me. And I can like rescue these guys. I was like, this would be great. It'd be awesome. Because they join your team after they're not working for the spectator anymore. But then you finish the fight and they're like, hey, thanks for helping us kill that guy. We're going to kill you now. And I was <laughs> like, you guys have been petrified for a hundred years. <laughs> and I don't even get to talk to you about like, Hey man, what were you doing down here? Why do you want to kill me? You don't even know me. Uh, and, and it's just like, there's so many things like that where like you have to do it in almost exactly the same way that they, they want you to in terms of broad strokes. 
but the the only real difference is like oh well i came in this door and i shot him with my bow and then your other friend will be like well i came in that door and i shot him with a fireball and you're like cool i, I guess they woke up from that long <laughs> slumber of petrification and was like you know what Grumpy. I'm just gonna kill everybody. Yeah, I'm grumpy. I'm kill everybody yeah. yeah, it's like I, I was talking to somebody the other day, and a guy would have you know been falsely imprisoned for 44 years, and I was like, man, I'm swinging on everybody. I'm going back <laughs> to jail. I'm mad. You got me in prison for all these years. Falsely. I'm gonna earn it this time. Exactly. So these people probably woke up like, oh, I know you didn't do this, but you're gonna have to suffer, player. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it, it, it's also getting to the point where like a lot of the characters are just starting to not annoy me but i'm starting to like really see through the cracks of like how they work like did we really need two different companions who their whole thing is i have a bomb in my chest like did we need that twice <laughs> right. like it's if i had a quarter for every time i'd only have two quarters but like it's weird i got two um <laughs> now i want to ask you the elusive the most thought about question that i'm sure is on everybody's mind in the chat yeah did you or did you not have the the dreaded bear sex no 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 so i'm so you can have the bear sex in one of two ways either you're a druid or you uh sleep with this one druid who joins your party called halson and uh i don't really like him that much like he's fine uh but he's just not particularly interesting actually i got screwed in the game not in the fun way but i got screwed <laughs> because there's this really fun character who i was really excited she was like the person i was most excited to have join the party because she's she seems like she's the one that's going to actually have like a different opinion uh, because she's this drow called Minthara and you have to do like a very specific thing to get her to join you. And I did that specific thing in act one. And when you do that, she's supposed to join you like midway through act two, but the game bugged and she did wasn't there where she was supposed to be. Uh, and so like, I just got completely robbed of one of my companions, the only paladin in the game. I got completely <clears> robbed <throat> of having her in my party because the game just decided no, you don't get to have her. Um, but it, hey, do you want to have Asterion try to suck you off again? Because I'm like, no, I don't actually. <laughs> no, thank you though. No, I'm actually fine. I'm good. It's like I'm I'm having a lot of fun with the game, but it's also just like I I'm just blown away that people are like so in love with this game because there there are aspects of it that are pretty good, but I feel like you have to wade through like so much nonsense and just like really clunky gameplay and ui to get to the fun parts so i i am shocked genuinely shocked that yeah. it has won so many awards yeah i feel like it's one of those things like i guess it's, it's kind of like pal world in a way and we'll get to that later but it feels like it's one of those things where it's it just kind of took people about the world by storm so like people playing it didn't expect it to be this good and it kind of i think it maybe blew up because of word of mouth more than anything else yeah well i think another big part of it is just and this is going to sound really reductive but i think it's genuinely true i i think that one of the reasons people fell in love with this game so much is because it is so horny i like it is this is the horniest game i've ever played <laughs> every single one of my companions wants to sleep with me immediately and all the time like every time that i go and lay down one of my partners is like hey um you want to see my dick and i'm like no <laughs> i don't actually I don't. <laughs> We're cool. Where's HR when you need them? Yeah, it's like, I don't know. It's it's just annoying. It, it's getting to a point where it's really annoying. Because also, uh, especially the, the guy characters, when, when they're like, hey, do you want to sleep with me? And you're like, no. Then they get really pissy about it. And you're like, <laughs> dude, chill the f like, chill out. <laughs> like, but is this art imitating life? Wait a minute. It's just like, I have told this one character, Gail, I have told him that I don't want to sleep with him on three separate occasions and every time he goes mm. <laughs> <laughs> well fine then Bowie, oh, Bowie. I, I didn't want to sleep with you either and it's like <laughs> shut up dude Bowie. Oh, Bowie. oh that's messed up that's funny in in a very uh uncomfortable way that they <laughs> try to get at you like this you must have made a pretty boy you, you have to did you make a woman, a girl character, or a guy character? No, I'm just playing as a dude. I'm just like a big buff man. That's oh, yeah. all. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I genuinely don't know if you can make an ugly character because again, it's a very horny game. I I don't know if I've seen a character who was unattractive and wasn't like an ogre. <laughs> you know, I think every humanoid character has been in some way attractive. Hell, even the ogres are getting it in in this game, from what I saw. They so. are. They are. Yeah, that's <laughs> interesting, man. I, I still have to play it. I have it on uh, on the side. I I want it thanks to my my buddy. Uh, 
uh he changed his name now but i'll just go by his old name everybody would know spooky he had a giveaway on his show so i won it from him have to get into that uh as far as myself i had been watching zon 100 I've, I've missed the latest episode so i need to catch up but it is as colorful as vibrant as far as that goes it's a different take on the zombie uh genre in a way i i had we have seen situations where people were kind of gleeful in the apocalypse but um yeah. i think it's the first anime i can well i guess unless you count the one i really with, don't yeah I, I really we don't know many zombie apocalypse animes there's like this and then there was high school of the dead that's the only one i can think I of yeah and yeah. high school of the dead was kind of middle ground because it had so much cheesecake going where they showed it the ladies very cheesecake exactly and also uh i don't know if you know but the reason it never got a, a second season was because the writer died yeah i knew about and that. then the guy the guy who his like co-writer or whatever uh they were like hey man do you want to like pick up where he left off like you know where the story's going and then he said no i'm gonna do my own thing and then his own thing bombed <laughs> oh wow yeah dang yeah like that I, when i first saw uh high school of the dead i saw uh i guess a video clip and it showed the guy shooting a sniper rifle between the girl's chest yeah. and and i was like what is this you know and hell it, of a show yeah the like, girl <laughs> was doing these acrobatic slices with a you know a sword and a, a katana and the 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 sniper round is going right between her her chest as she's fumbling around and the chest just defying physics as yeah. it's going i was like this is hilarious but also turning me on i don't know how to take this right now <laughs> oh no yeah i was very I, confused. I do genuinely really like high school of the dead i think it's i think it's a really good show and then just like also they threw in all this fan service stuff and mm -hmm. i'm like i don't really need all that yeah but like whatever man very over the top very over the top well, yeah 100 percent. but you know one of my things that i do is i read manhwas so outside of just manga i read manhwas so speaking of man manga i have been reading one punch man of course i am up to the current chapter 200 but i haven't read that yet as far oh. as the manhwa i have a bunch that i have to start putting you all on that i don't think many people give enough love to because manga, manga gets the, all the love. It's, you know, it's the biggest genre. And as far as, you know, uh, Asian uh, comics, I guess, are concerned. But our brothers in, in Korea are stepping up. And they need some love. Because you have some stuff like Solo Leveling now has an anime, for instance. But the book uh, or the manhwa is so well done to me. It, yeah. ri it rivals any uh, manga out there, in my opinion. It's, that, it's, it's really that good. Um, there are others too that, is, that I kind of escaped my head at the top right now, but I'm going to have to make a, a, a list of that to chart to recommend to you guys if you all are interested in reading those types of things. But as far as gaming, as you can see on the screen, uh, Prince of Persia I had beat that the other day. Loved it, man. Uh, came through with a nine out of 10 score there. You know what? It's one thing I think I not think one thing I really dislike in a game that you're really, really enjoying is when you're playing it and you're enjoying it and you're trying to get your achievements and things like that because i'm an achievement bot i want all my achievements if i'm really enjoying the game and if if it's not too ridiculous if it's not like you know seriously 3.0 from gears or something like that um yeah they have glitched uh missions and such right so like there's two missions that are glitched and i can't finish those side missions so i can't get the achievement and then there's one held back from like a little treasure where you have to shoot this arrow up and i've done it thousands of times thousands of times and it won't activate to give me the treasure chest which is also part of an achievement so i i wrote you know i posted about that and put it to ubisoft uh, support hopefully they'll be getting on that but things like that annoy me to no end yeah. honestly so it took it made me a bit sour but as far as a game goes as far as a metroidvania if you all love those types of games the ori's you know what i mean of the world the guacamelees of the world I highly, highly recommend Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. So well done. Uh, this is the same team with the pedigree who have made Rayman, who made uh, Beyond Good and Evil. So this is a quality team. You know, I didn't I didn't really know that at first. This is Ubisoft Montreal. So they, they're very talented. And it shows when you play this game. Combat is great. The visuals are great. The music is great. Uh, the story is even solid, in my opinion. It's just a great all-around game. I can't praise it enough, but yeah, uh, outside of that, haven't really been watching too much 
but I have a few things I'm, I have on the list is to check out soon. But uh, mm. let's uh, let's move into the uh, news roundup, and we have a lot of unfortunate news, of course. Oh yeah, it's a bummer from top to bottom on this list. So like, buckle in, Buckaroo. It's not gonna be a fun time at all. Uh. So the first thing I got here, I know we're going to talk about Power World later, unless you just want to talk about it now, since it's just the two of us. Um, we can do that. Yeah, we can uh, the, uh, We can transition into whatever. Uh, sure. We have the Blizzard obvious situation. Yeah, that'll be the main that'll, topic for sure. Exactly. We can leave that for We're going to be talking about that for 40 minutes, I'm sure. Yep. Um, but yeah, so hey, Power World, big, big success. It's like 8 million players in six days or something. Like, it's absolutely insane. Uh, it's not even out yet, technically. It's in early access. Um, but... The thing that I wanted to add here from for the rundown is, uh, hey, they, there was a Pokemon mod in it, and it got taken down right quick, real fast. <laughs> Those <laughs> Nintendo lawyers showed up at the doorstep. I think the guy who posted it originally was like, they have come for me, and then disappeared from social media. Um, the, the Nexus that was ho- hosting it is like, we are no longer hosting any Pokemon mods. We do not want to get destroyed. Uh, they are DMCAing every single content creator who shows any amount of Pokemon Pile World content on their channel. They are going absolutely hog wild on this topic. <laughs> uh, and all I can say is, man, Nintendo, if you put half that effort into making a good Pokemon game, we wouldn't be having this conversation, would we? Isn't that crazy? I even if saw you put half that effort. I even saw the Pile World official account mock them and say uh, something along the lines of the cheap knockoff you know show power world and the yeah. game they're telling you that you knocked off and it showed the pokemon open world game and it looked like night and day power world pale world oh, yeah. looks so much better i there's was like that, that's crazy there's that picture where it's like if i asked you which of these company or which of these games was made by a trillion dollar company you would not guess correctly <laughs> <laughs> exactly. you would not be able to tell me yeah. uh and, and it's true it's true because the the last two or three pokemon games have looked like dog water and this looks i mean not amazing but way better way better um from the time i played it i haven't given it a ton of time because i because i was some prince of persia but and it's not really my genre i'm not the big like i think you're the same right where we're not uh, yeah i haven't touched same. it at all i don't yeah. know if i will um, now I, for me like i'll have to be drawn in by the help of, of friends so you know shout out to holly if she'd help me out and to my buddy casual who i know is going to annoy me and probably try to enslave me somehow um, no yeah, yeah i can see him trying to do that but because you can capture human characters in this game which is hilarious i saw that yeah it, which apparently also means you can butcher them so i yeah. saw like a clip where someone caught like some goon and then chopped him up for meat and i, I was saw like that. what is what is this game is this a bug is this <laughs> yeah. a feature yeah that's pretty crazy uh but you know <clears throat> i saw these things so that like for me i think i would have to play it with a group of people or somebody else at least kind of pull me along that's the way I see it, but um, it's yeah. it's crazy the success this game has had in 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 general. And Nintendo apparently, outside of them putting that DCMA out there to squash that that mod, uh, yeah. which by the way looked pretty dope. I saw Ash running around, and I saw the the Pikachu's and all that. I'm like, wow, yeah. this looks good. Um, I can see obviously why they would. And Nintendo doesn't play that, you know that. But no, they don't. Yeah, mess I don't, around at all. At all. Hell, I was warned not to even use them their imagery on like advertisement for the show no yeah do not put nintendo things it, like hey anyone who's listening to this who is a content creator or expiring content creator do not put anything nintendo anywhere ever they will <laughs> find you like they it is insane do not play a second of their music do not show a minute of their gameplay like you just you just can't you just mm-hmm. can't because they will at some point show up and be like hey all uh you made this i made this that's my money now, baby. <laughs> your property is my property yeah it's not worth it and nintendo doesn't play but so there is a report now that <laughs> nintendo's and and uh pokemon company are actually right now investigating power world to see if there is any you know plagiarism right now at this moment they put out a little yeah. statement and everything like that to say that they're going to look into it and see if there's anything they can find and there have been a lot of like crazy responses in the in the community yeah. because of this right like we know you got a, a salty Hooved brothers on the other side who are mad of course it's because it's not on playstation <laughs> and we got our xbox uh on our side of course uh, that are you know obviously using it to to rub it in their faces 
but yeah. I've been surprised. I'm not sure if you saw it, but I've been surprised with the response from a lot of devs. Have you seen their responses to some of this? I've seen some of it, um, but no, I mean, what are you talking about specifically? So you had a few people who, like, for instance, from um, uh, Naughty Dog, who okay, responded. Dude. I forgot. I think his name was Dale Walker or Dev Walker. He well, responded. Started our career ripping off Indiana Jones, but we'll tell you. <laughs> exactly. And they were saying, he said something along the lines of, he can't quite put his, put his finger on it, but something is off about Power World as if, you know, it was using AI. So it had been talk of and speculation of it using AI. I mean, it, they may have, like, it's a really yeah. small team, but mm -hmm. I, man, I mean, finish your thought, because we're going to talk about the did they rip it off thing. I've, yeah. I've got thoughts on that. Yeah, so they, they speculated that it could have been could have been AI used to do whatever they do. They said that it feels, I've heard, so I've seen a talk that uh, they believe it's kind of a, a money cash wrap situation where, you know, it's not a real fleshed out game. Um, you know, obviously, Lot, uh, claims of plagiarism from Zelda to Fortnite to Pokemon, things of that nature. You, you're seeing all those types of really kind of over the top responses that I wouldn't have expected, honestly, from devs. Because de devs are kind of usually mute when it comes to that. They don't really put themselves themselves out there like that. But I, I found it kind of, you know, interesting to see a guy from Naughty Dog and a few of his colleagues too, if I'm not mistaken, they responded, who were kind of salty about this. And then I thought about it. What, why would they be so adamant about this and and kind of for what it looked like at least bothered and then i thought about it and said oh yeah didn't they just have the last of us remaster 2 well last of us 2 remaster drop within that week they did and power world can like completely overshadowed it so i think it's a bit of saltiness on their end that had them uh reacting in the way they did i just found it really interesting <laughs> i don't know if you guys in the chat had seen that and if you seen any other responses posted in there so i can uh i can probably refresh my memory but yeah i just i thought that was interesting that the guy from naughty dog and his teammates uh were kind of hating on this game at least and insinuating that it could have been ai that it wasn't properly made or something shady about it all the while they had just released the remaster of the last of us 2 and really nobody is talking about it if we're being honest nobody is talking about that game everybody's eyes and intention are on Power World, which is this crazy phenomenon now that that has now crossed eight million in sales uh, on Steam alone. So it's pretty insane. But yeah, what were you gonna say on that? Sorry, somebody outside car started going crazy, which I'm sure you heard. Um, <laughs> I heard a little bit of it, a little bit. It, it, yeah, it's apparently I live in the street. Um, but no, the it, I think the comparison to Pokemon, like I understand why it's there, and I think it's very intentional, right? Like. Yeah, you catch them in pal balls, and you collect you collect them, and they go in a pal decks. Like there is a there is a lot of comparisons to make to Pokemon, and and that's fine. I think there's a ton of games that also do that. Um, I think the people who are like, oh my god, this is a one to one, like this is the same game. I'm like, okay, first of all, this is a survival game. Pokemon has not made a survival game at, at all, as far as I'm aware. Uh, this is not so gameplay wise, it's a completely different game right off the bat. And then you look at the actual Pokemon. And whenever, whenever I, I see the ones where it's like, man, this is this is a direct comparison to this other, like this pal compared to this Pokemon. It's like, look, this pal that's a sheep looks like this Pokemon that's a sheep. And I'm like, yeah, you know what else they look like? Sheep. <laughs> but, hey, <laughs> right. this blue penguin looks like the blue penguin from uh from Pokemon. Yeah, it's, it's just a penguin, dude. Like... <laughs> Like most Pokemon are just based on real animals. And so the pals are also based on those same animals. Like the, I'm not saying that they didn't like intentionally look at some design elements and be like, Hey, this is really popular. What can we take from this? That will potentially make them be cuter. Cause like, yeah, there are some elements where I'm like, Oh yeah. The thing on the top of this creature looks like the same as the fin on top of Sobble or like, Oh, this thing's ears kind of look like the ears on Lucario. And it's like, sure. Yeah. They're also just, different po like they're different like <laughs> it's a pretty hard thing to be like this is 100 a ripoff of this other creature when like if you look through all of the the pantheon of creatures made in, in different anime it's like there's probably a hundred monsters that look similar to pokemon 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Tons like, of I think it's so disingenuous sure. to be like, oh, these are one-to-one ripoffs. Like, oh my God, I can't believe they got away with this. When it's like, bro, where have you been? There's like over a thousand Pokemon. Like, of course, some of the things that they made are going to resemble things that Pokemon made because they've made everything. They made so many things that they oh, ran sure. out of ideas and made one that was a ice cream. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. What are, like, what are we talking about? Like, come on. Yeah, no, you're not wrong there. It's like at their point, you're gonna have crossover. You know, it's like the it's like the the thing with South Park. Simpsons did it. It's like at a point, you know, you're yeah, gonna, you're gonna have that crossover. <laughs> but it is what it is on that. I, I feel like again, I think it's more saltiness. I think because uh, not just Nintendo, but I would say Nintendo fanboys even got you don't typically in this 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 era of of fanboying and warring is typically come down to PlayStation and Xbox guys and Nintendo yeah. fanboys kind of stay in their own lane from what I've noticed. I think this kind of pulled them out of it a little bit and they started to get <laughs> into it. That's what I think. I feel like they saw the response and it was like, hold on, this is a rip off of our beloved Pokemon, you know, and I think that's partly why it's kind of blown up like that. And oh, man, uh, you show me the game where Pikachu pulls out a, a submachine yeah. gun. Right, and and I'll, I'll I'll start agreeing with you. Yeah, oh man, it's a complete ripoff. How'd they get away with it? Right, Pika pulls out the PK, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, like Safo said, it's a narrative in search of evidence, and I think that's right. I think that, yeah, I don't think they'll. Yeah, they're throwing it out there and trying to find evidence after the fact. I even saw a yeah. guy who was so adamant about the AI thing that after it was proved that it wasn't that he had to he came back and apologized and all that. So yeah, these these guys are really gung ho about this and too like overly passionate. Uh, I saw one guy yeah. who was lamenting the, the the thought of artistic integrity being robbed from the from the artist and such, and <laughs> you know, like people were really going like, in on it this. It wasn't. It wasn't even that though. Yeah, right. They, and, and to anybody who's like, oh well, of course you're defending this game. You're an Xbox guy, because like, you know, I don't see that in the chat or anything, because our chat's usually pretty good. But like, you know, theoretically, there's going to be one person who finds this content at some point and is like, oh, a dickhead. Uh, let me also add, like, I'm not defending this because it's on Xbox. And also, I don't even think it's a good game. <laughs> I'm, ju I'm just like, I don't think this is Pokemon. Like, I look at it and I'm like, I've never hit any of my Pokemon with an axe and put them in labor camps. Is that something you've been doing? Like, <laughs> right. mm, like I, they're just completely different games. And like, do some of the designs look the same? Sure. Or like similar, but not anywhere near close enough to be like, yeah, oh, we're gonna win a lawsuit about this because, like, you have to, it has to be pretty much one to one mm -hmm. for you. You know how many characters have come out throughout the years that look like Mario? It's every Italian dude basically who's a cartoon <laughs> character. They've been like, Look, there's Mario. It's a me. Uh, how many lawsuits have been successful in that category? None, You're right? You know, and this is not going to be any different, like, right. even it's just with, it's not going to go anywhere, even with Nintendo being you know, notoriously litigious. I agree with you, <laughs> Yo, Donnie. What's up, brother? He says. Blicky Chew. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I do want to read this super chat since I, did, I didn't I did read it. And it's from uh, uh, my brother from Chicago, Adidas. Adidas, 20 zero. He drops a $5, a generous $5 donation. He says, I'm here. Almost like All Might. I'm here. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, everything's all right. I'm here now. Exactly. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, and Boba, he says, uh, Pokey Funs fans just not. I said, Pokey Funs, Pokey Funs, <laughs> gotta catch them all. Pokey fans just not liking competition. I think that's really the thing. I think you're right. I think it's kind of like, I think, like I said, it's this shock to their system because they're kind of used to Nintendo having its own unique dominance when it comes to that. I was talking to a buddy again and, and I asked him this question. I want to ask you and get your thoughts on it as far as Power World. Because now, of course, the narrative changed to, it's a fad. And I want to get you guys' thoughts in the chat, too. You tell me if you what you think about this. So I asked him, and he's well-versed in these types of games. This is his forte. So I do value his thoughts on it, although I, I thought he wasn't quite getting what I was trying to ask. So hmm. there, the, the, the speculate, or at least the, 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 the talk, the narrative now is, that it's a fad, this game, and it's going to go away, and it's, it's only popular for now, et cetera, et cetera, you know. So what? let me ask you, do you think that Pal World is a fad that's going to, you know, what, what would you give the ceiling for uh, this game uh, 
I guess even surpassing. Yeah. Uh, what was it? What was the last one that it needs to take over to? I think it was three million for not CS:GO, but uh, what's that other other game? I don't know, it's all the way up there. Yeah, is um, it? I do think it'll definitely PUBG, drop off. Like I don't think it'll hold its ridiculous streak that it's on right now for particularly long. Um, because I just don't, I don't know, I don't really see like a ton of staying power in that kind of content. Um, because mm-hmm. it's going to be a lot of like I have to build my base and then put them in my Pikachu in its sweat camp or whatever. Um, I, I don't see that necessarily staying at the peak that it's at right now. I think a lot of the people who are playing it right now, like streamer wise, are probably going to go back to the things that they're more comfortable with after I don't know a couple weeks a month. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to like vanish. I think it's always going to be something that people talk about. Uh, maybe not always, but you know what I mean. Like it's gonna, it's gonna I think be it, a lexicon of our discussions. Yeah, like I think yeah. it drops off, but I don't think it disappears. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I do. I I do think there is a certain amount of it where it is where it is for sure a fad. Like it's for sure people are talking about it because they're like, oh my god, did you hear about this thing? It's really blowing up. Did you hear about this uh, Pokemon with guns thing? Like yeah, there's it's like there's a water cooler thing, right? Yeah. yeah, there's absolutely a percentage, probably a high percentage, uh, of people who who are going to it for <laughs> for that who don't stick around uh but i think it you know it will find its audience i think a lot of people really like this type of survival like base building gameplay i think it has a lot of legs in terms of just like people can play it for a very long time and just continue to just stick around with it so as long as they keep updating it and like adding new things or whatever like yeah i think i think this game will be fine i just there's but there's no way that we see it you know maintain this level of like cultural relevance <laughs> yeah i'm kind of with you on that i don't think it will either although we don't know because I, again none of us would have expected it to sell eight million that's true yeah know? that's a good point so in in what six days insane and by the way seven million dollars to make this game they've already brought in at least close to, if not past it 300 million already what oh yeah, it, now they made their money back immediately. Oh man, what an insane It's not even return. out yet. Like I can't stress that enough. This is early access. Like oh, this game is not even. Point. This that's game a, is not even out yet. That's a good point. It's not even out. It's not fully out. This is zero point one or whatever. Like this is not even a full release, and yeah. it's already not only earned back what its you know budget, but it's also like I don't even know what you would quantify that. How how many times is that over to seven million? Right. Um. I, you know, like a what? I guess a thirty-time return or whatever, almost. But it's, it's. I'm being ridiculous, of course. But that's it's insane that that that. And I forgot who funded them, uh, Pocket Pair. But I mean, they have to have already have had discussions about the the roadmap and you know a seer, a, a, excuse me, a sequel, things of that nature. So I, I feel like for one, this is good a good shakeup for a few reasons. One, it it. For those who do love this genre, if for one it speaks to them, great quality game for them, right? And that the sequel is likely going to be that much more solid. That's one. Two, it forces, excuse me, other people who like Nintendo, for instance, to to get out of their their laziness in a way and give uh, their fans also a solid new Pokemon game. So God, you can. I hope. Yeah, I think this is going to shake the cobwebs enough to really get them to put out a quality product. So I think it's good for that reason. That's, and that's why competition matters so much, right? Because you get, people can't be complacent. So I think that's a good thing for that reason. And just to read up on what a fad is, if you all don't know, the fad is an intense and widely shared enthusiasm for something, especially one that is short lived and without basis in the object's qualities, a craze. So this definitely fits that. <laughs> it definitely well, yeah, fits 100%. that description. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, it definitely fits that description. I just wonder if it's going to be something that's short-lived fully because we don't know just yet. It's it's too early to say. But yeah, I, I, I yeah. think it's one of those things where like I think it starts dying off, and then every so often I think we hear like a big story that comes out of it. Where like oh, they just added all these yeah. new pals, wow! And then like people will start playing it again. Like the streamers will go back to it. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like it's one of those games that one of my friends uses like viewership on Twitch as the, the ride or die metric for whether or not a video game is good, which is mm. of course ridiculous because like single player games exist. Um, true. But I think in this case, that is kind of true. Like, I, I think this game is going to be <clears throat> really carried by like what content creators do with it. Like if content creators yeah. continue to play it and like make content mm-hmm. off of it, 
then people will continue to play it. And if that starts falling off, then I don't think this game sticks around. I think you actually made a good point there. I actually saw a video clip of the guy Ninja, who has to be so well off that he doesn't have to do this anymore. But he was even saying that, and he was playing it, and he was saying that this will force Nintendo to get off their asses, basically, too. And I think you're right. Please, you have <laughs> All right. Please so you, give me a good Pokemon game. I've it, been patient. I, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to happen, man. I mean, get the Switch 2 coming up probably later this year, right? So, yeah, God, I hope so. I expect something good from them soon. And Nintendo, I mean, it's Nintendo, to be fair. They, 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 they'll they give you some quality stuff. You know what I mean? But they give quality I, I things. They just don't give quality things to Pokemon fans. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, um, you know, I think you're right. I think that it will be carried by the content ki- creators and maybe the pocket pair or whomever really have to reach out to these people and kind of get them on board. You know what I mean? To kind of continue that gravy train, if you will. Yeah. Because they those types do push that. I mean, you look at the, the success of anybody associated with Kai Sinat. So you now you see that shift where uh, superstars like Nicki Minaj or, yeah. you know, uh, what's her name? I almost said Salt and Pepper. Uh, what's her name? Ice Spice. I don't know what we're talking about. Ice, oh, Spice. Ice Spice. I don't like Ice Spice. I don't, you know, I don't dislike I don't, her, but I don't care for her music. I just care for yeah, her Yeah, that's visually. what I meant. I don't yeah. know her personally. I don't want to disparage her and be like, oh, actually, I heard she sucks. No, I just don't yeah. like her music. I heard she's a sweetheart, actually, but I'm musically, sure I have no care for her, but she looks very pleasing to my eye, I will say. Outside of that McDonald's, <laughs> Wendy's uh, red fro she got, I don't care for that, but <laughs> when she oh, has no. it laid down, I was like, all right, now, just what I like. Oh, and just for you guys in the chat, if you have not done so, or those lurking, could you please hit the like button? And if you have not done so yet, subscribe. I see we have a few likes. I want to get that up from the views we have had. Timmy, what's up, Junior? Uh, But yeah, like, man, I will say on the whole Pal World thing, I think you're right as far as that goes. The streamers will really carry this or not. Uh, And we kind of had a game like this that kind of had this, but it was much more controversy around it than this had uh obviously hogwarts of last year carried oh, by controversy yeah. right well but the big difference there is the content creators who were making hogwarts content a lot of them got like so bullied and, and, our, doxed and stuff and that's I not gonna happen about to for say that. so true yeah well because there was yeah. this one i don't really mess with vtubers but there was this one vtuber who was playing it and uh and she got like straight up bullied off the platform for playing wow. it. and i was like guys you gotta stop they, <laughs> like they got her chill, off the actually. platform in, in totality did she got out of there yeah i don't know if she came back or whatever i don't know the whole story a friend of mine who pays attention to like yeah. hollow live stuff told me about it That's uh, so i might be like saying this wrong maybe she just took a break or something but she yeah she, yeah, she definitely like stopped making content for a while because that's she got... insane you know yeah. I, I believe it though because i saw uh, other people affected like uh big time streamers like hassan campbell for instance he was like bullied off of trying to play it i believe i'm pretty sure yeah so like yeah, if it can affect somebody big like that, I'm sure she's not as big as he is. And no, Hassan's huge. Yeah, so that's it's insane, man. I don't I don't care for that. I get it though, right? Like I understand why people were upset with that, but I think that's uncool. But just to go to that point, Francis Archer he says, what about the story that Pal World promotes animal cruelty and slave yeah, Pokemon is already about dog fights. Like we're not going, <laughs> <laughs> like we're not getting away from that. Yeah. He never escaping those allegations, and then I he mean, says, like "We never." He says, we never... being reported to Peta, and and but yeah. Oh yeah, Peta like put out some some press release or something where they were like, "We don't like this," and everyone was like, "That's nice, dude." Like, because they don't like anything. So, have whatever. you tried vegan options? Yeah, I see. Yeah, some of that. yeah. It's like, it's... yeah, okay, I get the like. This <laughs> game is definitely more violent to the pals than Pokemon is to Pokemon, obviously, because it's like, well, you can butcher them and you put them in like what are internment camps like they are you cannot get across the the point where like these are slave labor camps like this is like you can look at the thing that's like oh they're in they have a a good disposition right now they're really happy to work here and it's like yeah i bet they were happy chilling in that field eating flowers (laughs) like they were doing before too well there's one i know who's not happy at all he looks quite pissed and oh depresso and that's my boy depresso i love him pushing depresso i think he's listen Depresso is the single reason I am actually interested in playing this game. I was in a party, man. Let me tell you guys this. Have story. you seen that he like yeah. does all the actions slower? Yeah. So he's just standing there and he's looking like pissed and he's just like eh. and, and when I heard it described to me, the way it was described to me by my, by my buddy, I'm thinking he's looking sad and down. And then I finally saw him. I'm like, this thing looks pissed. 
No, he is livid. It, yeah, he shouldn't be called <laughs> depresso. He should be like demado or something like that, right? Or or enraged though or something. I, he just looks mad as hell. Like he is tired of our bullshit. And he, <laughs> yeah, I saw him like slowly. Sorry, a video of him mining. <laughs> yeah, it's I saw really it. funny. I, I saw it's it. so funny. I saw it. And Blue Blue actually tagged me in, and she said, "That's Umbra." I'm like, you know what? That's about right. Yeah, you're right though. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> And, and we're all depresso at one point. Or we're another. all, de- yeah, we're all of us are <laughs> depresso. And I was laughing my ass off to that man. And he was just, he looked so upset. And so my buddy said he had one and described it to me well before I saw the, the phenomenon blow up about depresso. Cause now he has his own little like cult following now depresso. People really like that character. And my friend said, Hey, he said, yeah, I have uh, this Pokemon or oh, this pal named uh, depresso. And, I dropped him by mistake as I was flying around on, on, on uh, one of my other pals. And I'm like, oh. and I'm making fun of him, right? We're in a party and all of us. And I'm like, wait, so you threw him out and left him in the wilderness? He's like, I made a mistake and summoned the ball and threw it as I was flying. And he got lost in the wilderness. I'm like, and he said, I never went back to get him. I'm like, so you just left him out there. And he left him out there, but you could still see his stats and what's going on with him. And he started reading it off to me and I was just crying tears all of us were just laughing in the chat as i'm making fun of him and i'm like i'm like so wait a minute wait wait you left him out there and he said that he was depressed which obviously he's depresso i mean yeah i feel like he, <laughs> he starts there exactly so it starts off from depression and works his way down he said he was depressed bruised hungry uh frack i think he had a broken something or something like that i'm like you just i'm like you just abusing these poor slaves of yours and he's like f him i'm like you so you're just gonna leave him out there he told me eventually that the Presso found his way to his camp and got back with them <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Why he come home? He came back home. So he, you, oh man, that was hilarious. But it, then, and then I was talking to Blue, so I'm laugh. We are laughing our ass off because I'm I forgot all the stuff I said, but I'm mocking him the entire time, playfully of course, and talking about how he's been mistreating these these uh, quote unquote slaves of his, and and he had them working, and he said he had one. That was born, of course, because you can, I guess, read him. And he was like, ah, nice. He was like, the baby was saying his first words, like, hey, goo goo gaga. He's like, shut up, get to work. <laughs> get to work. <laughs> Punk. So, yeah. And then uh, Blue, that blue number in the chat, she said she had come across uh, Depresso, right? As we were playing the game, she eventually was like, oh, I see Depresso. And then a bunch of Depresso cousins and itself, a bunch of Depressos overtook her and killed her. <laughs> Hell yes. And she, the way she described it had me in tears because she was like, how did she say it? She, she said it in chat now, Depresso wants to kill me. And, but she described it as him walking over there depressed and was like, you're, yes, you're about to die now. <laughs> Man, I was, we had, a, it was such a hilarious party we had this past week. I was just dying laughing at the whole thought of it. But all of that intrigued the hell out of me to the point that I was like, I have to get Depresso. He's going to be the star of my pal collection. I'm going to see if I can cheer this thing up. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn that frown upside down, Depresso. If the game was just making Depresso happy, I would be more likely to play it. <laughs> she said "She <laughs> says suicide by cop. <laughs> oh, no. And apparently there are cops in this game, like a little you know, policing force that will get you. Oh capture humans and things like that and try to arrest you or whatever the case may be but no we'll it, just catch them too, make them put them to work <laughs> right gotta catch them all but no um that said uh we'll move on to the next thing because uh, i know we got plenty of other news in the yeah but yeah that's our chat about power world guys if you more all have bummers not done to it, come more bummers to come oh but you know what right, we did have some good highlights at least we did. I got a couple in here. It's just mostly bummers. Yeah, like tech in, I know, and uh, some scores yeah. for those and such. Yeah. Uh, so the next thing I got on here is the start of, uh, hey, man, I don't know if you heard of some layoffs this week. Uh, so the first one I got here is from Riot. So CEO Dylan Jadeja posted this, uh, and it goes on much longer. I'm just going to read the first paragraph. He said, Rioters, today I'm sharing a decision we hoped we would never have to make at Riot. We're changing some of the bets we've made and shifting how we work across the company to create focus and move us towards a more sustainable future. This decision means we're eliminating about 530 roles globally 
which represents about 11% of our workforce, with the biggest impact to teams outside of core development. This also sadly means we'll be saying goodbye to many talented colleagues and friends across all areas of Riot. I realize this is an awful news to hear, and especially hard for those who will be leaving us to all the rioters who are being laid off. Uh, we are deeply sorry that it has come to this. As CEO, I'm accountable for the changes we're making and where we're headed in the future, so I think it is important for me to share how we got here and how the next few days will work, and he goes on and on and on about, uh, hey, here's all the benefits you're going to get. It, it does seem like they're <clears throat> like doing their best to take care of the people they're letting go, which I respect. Um, it sucks that they're doing it, obviously, um, although I understand like the economic reasons for why they are. Um, it sucks ass. Like it, it's it's really rough. It's half like eleven percent of their workforce. Like that's a huge amount. Five hundred and thirty people just yeah. completely out of their job across the board. One of the things they talk about a lot in the the rest of the the thing that he posted was like, "Hey, I understand that some of you rely on this job to like keep your visas, so we're gonna help you keep oh, wow. that. Like we're gonna help you try and figure that out. We're gonna help you try and figure out like." housing there's going to be a lot of you know pay benefits and we're going to pay you for because like a lot of them are contract workers so when they get like oh they don't get to keep their health benefits but they're like we're going to pay you to make up for the fact that you're not going to be able to keep your health benefits like they're doing a lot of things to take care of their people but like obviously nothing that they're going to do is going to be as good as yeah having a job exactly (laughs) and and actual job security you know but I, i did look into this right and you know, some people obviously were like, oh, this is messed up as much money as you make. And, and we can all see that same thing with Microsoft here. Right. Yeah. I mean, we'll get into that later. But yeah. And so, you know, like you said, uh, this is actually I, I think if you're going to talk about giving somebody a, a, a proper severance, I don't think yeah. you can get better than this. Right. And so, I really respect the the there's part of the, the his statement that I think is really dumb, which is mm-hmm. him being like, we made some bad bets or something or like we we're changing the bets that we're making or something like that. I'm like, mm. yeah, you're talking about people's livelihoods. You probably shouldn't have bet. <laughs> you yeah. probably shouldn't have made gambles with that. Um, but I do like when he's like, as the CEO, like this is on me. Like I did this. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really commendable, even though he's doing kind of a shitty thing. Like I, I think that it's, I, I think it's a, a good thing that he's just like, Hey, I understand this sucks. It is my fault, and I will take all of the blame for this because it is my fault. Yeah, I think that that I think that takes a lot of courage, and I'm uh, you know I'm kind of proud of him, I yeah. guess, for that. I least. mean, the message overall is better than at least yeah. I guess the sum uh, overall is better than that one part at least. Yeah. And, oh, and, and I really yeah. like that they weren't just like, oh yeah, we did this to make ourselves more agile. Now we can focus better on making games. Like, right. no, he didn't say any of that shit. He was yeah. like. Hey, we made some bad bets. We don't have the money to pay these people. It sucks. I'm sorry, but yeah, right. Like I, I feel like he he said it in a way that was less offensive than most. Yeah, and makes a, sense. I, I I think you're right, and it's it's just being honest too, right? Like, hey, yeah, we made some mistakes here, and it's cost people their jobs. We can't apologize enough, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. I think that I think that's fair, and it's real. Because so we can we can we can be drawn to a real authentic response, yeah. and, and like you said, I think. The severance for this is actually really solid because, and of course, nothing, of course, it will take away from them losing their jobs, but you get six no, yeah. months of severance pay, 100% of their annual performance bonuses. Of course, they get access to the company laptops. Like you said, the people are going to be found. Yeah, that was housing. something I saw where it was like, hey, if you don't have a computer, we will give you one of the laptops that we mm-hmm. have for the company because like you need a computer to find a job. Exactly. Uh, I'm and, like most I, I know for a fact most jobs would never have even oh yeah. considered that. Not at so all. So it's really cool that they're doing that. Absolutely. Now they're in California. So somebody had raised an objection, was like, by California law, uh severance pay is required. Yeah, but you have to yeah, read it also, to this. It's way yeah. better than the, the typical California. It's, it's that and also they're worldwide. So like mm-hmm. they wouldn't necessarily have to do it to people who or do that for people. And and that's another thing they talk about a lot in their their paperwork or whatever that they that they put out was like there are different things that we have to do for different people who are being laid off in different countries. Like there are right. different laws about how we are able to do this. And so mm-hmm. some people will have different benefits in different, you know, circumstances just because of that. Exactly. Um, and you then, know, I, I like how transparent they were about it. I, agree. I really do. I agree. And it's, and the way the severance package works in LA is like, they have to give you uh, two weeks for every year you've been with the company. Right. When riot is giving them 13 full paychecks along with everything else. Yeah. So this is not typical, right? Like this, and I'm not, it's not to praise, like, obviously that people lost no, their yeah, job. No, it's, it's a shitty yeah. situation. Yeah, like, it's there's a no, shitty situation, but you got to give no them their good. praise for handling it that part at least, Will. 
and taking yes. care of the people that they are. Like, if you like, had to do this, this is probably the best way to do it. Exactly. So, you know, shout out to, to Riot for handling this in the best possible way in the worst situation, uh, at least. And again, we got more bad news to come, but hopefully yeah. these folks can land on their feet. I did see some people from Xbox, ironically, uh, yeah. reaching out, saying that they had positions and, you know, reach out to them and stuff like that from like the yeah. late round. So hopefully again, these folks land on their feet. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, over at Black Forest Games and Embracer Own Studio, uh, who was working on the TMNT Last Ronin game, uh, they have laid off uh, 50 people, which is 50% of their workforce, uh, and have apparently moved the, basically the rest of the team onto a different project. Uh, so that that uh, TMNT game is not happening anymore. It's not officially canceled, but it is like almost for sure not coming out. I didn't find a mm. specific press release about this one because Embracer's just cleaning house. You know, they're basically going door to door and being like, all right, what can mm -hmm. we get rid of? Like, we got to send some people to Goodwill. Yep. Um, Downsizing for sure. I mean, yeah, this is going to be a continued theme from Embracer, as we know. Like, we've been oh, it's, saying that. Yeah. It, it's going to be a continued thing throughout the entire industry, it turns mm -hmm. out. So, yep. Um, yep. And then over at People Can Fly, uh, another 30 people were laid off. Uh, and Project Gemini, which I, they didn't say much about other than it was published by being published by Square, uh, is being shut down. They moved everybody off that off that project because uh, there were I think they said there were 50 people working on it. They laid off 30 of them and moved 20 of them to a different project. Um, so that's all of the small layoffs this week. Uh, and it was. What, like 700 <laughs> just this week? absolutely insane like sorry about that i was switching scenes. no you're good it's but yeah it, it really sucks awful. man and I, like, like i was reading up on it and somebody pointed out pointed out that already this year um just from layoffs just already january. just january yeah. is 60 percent of what we had in 2024 as far as layoffs yeah well it apparently was, it's gonna get yeah a lot worse um mm -hmm. i mean i'll let you finish your thought but my next thing is hey it's gonna get a lot worse yeah no like it was uh just to give him his proper shout out it was uh Juge, which is obviously oh from, yeah 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 Juge uh, he's, he's named after the Juge Leon. chinese strategist exactly yeah. and he uh pointed it out saying there's already 60 percent of the layoffs of last year so and i think a lot of us thought this was coming in like we knew it was coming for it for xbox with activision it was no way they was gonna they were gonna take on yeah 20 plus thousand people and keep all of them it just wasn't happening um yeah so we knew that there was going to be some redundancies and things of that nature but yeah. man already 60 percent of last year is depressing yeah and i don't want to get into the microsoft thing yet because yeah. you know, we'll get to that at the end uh but yeah it's it's rough like i don't think there's been the only studio i can think of right now that i don't think has had layoffs is nintendo and like i don't i don't know it, that might be just around the corner like it's i don't know we'll talk about it later uh but the next story i have here is uh hey so gamesindustry.biz reached out to a lot of the presidents of different gaming companies and asked them off the record what they thought of all the layoffs uh, and the conclusion that they came to is multiple of them are saying that 2024 is going to be a year of closures not layoffs but closures so here's some wow. some quotes that i pulled out of this industry it was from uh, I, I said, it's from christopher dring at gamesindustry.biz uh here it goes if 2023 was a year of layoffs 2024 will be a year of closures said a ceo of a public company not just developers but publishers media services service companies there are just too many unprofitable businesses in and around video games we're looking at up to two years of pain um but growing concern i'm skipping a bunch just to pull out like the parts that because there's a lot of like fluff in there, obviously. Uh, but a growing concern for the publishers we spoke to is the abundance of games being released across all platforms. Quote, too many games were greenlit in 2000, uh, 2020 and 2021. One publisher boss said, we need to get a pre-pandemic levels in terms of release schedule. And that's probably going to take two years. You can already see publishers signing fewer games. Uh, that's happening everywhere. The stores are saturated, not just Steam. And, and the games are just just aren't delivering the levels they were. Another said the expansion and investment over COVID has left engagement-based business, uh, not just video games, spread too thin. We're doing too many things and none of them are delivering. The solution for companies to dive is to divest or cut areas of the business that are unprofitable or a distraction from their core offerings and to focus on what they do best. Focus isn't exciting, but getting back to basics, back to those foundations and building back up 
is needed in a lot of cases, said another prominent business leader. So they talk to a lot of people who they aren't naming because they probably don't want their names on like, hey, we're probably going to have to close studios. Um, but it's going to be a very bad year for for this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then there's a lot of other stories that like, like another thing I have in here uh, that speaks directly to what the, they were saying in there is Square Enix is saying that they want to make fewer games it's exactly what they were saying in that and that square enix saying that came out like five four five six days before uh this new thing they literally just said like i want to structure our development function i mean here's the quote i want to structure our development function so that we are able to ensure higher quality from each title by slimming down our lineup it's it's literally word for word like mm, like right. this is this is not like a hypothetical thing even though they didn't put people's names on it like this is a thing that is happening across the board everywhere um yeah. And it's and it's really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> it's really bad. Like we saw in the Insomniac leaks that like they made their money back on Spider-Man 2. They did. They made a ton of money on it. Um but even so, they still had to do layoffs and they're still talking about closing one of PlayStation Studios, which is insane to think about because like they are the name in video games. Like I love Xbox, <laughs> you love Xbox. They are the name in play in video games and they are making money hand over fist and it's not enough. Yeah, man. <sighs> And it's you know what's what's crazier about it when you look at that, these companies are recording record profits. Yeah, from Sony to Xbox, record profits and and revenue, and and still this is happening. So I don't know if it's a matter of of the pay rate being too much and people can't keep up with it for the company's greedy interest. At the end of the day, or, yeah, I think it's a combination. Yeah, right. You know, I, I think it's uh, it's a combination of like. I mean, like they said in the article, they they over pretty much the entire industry over expanded during COVID because they were seeing a lot of returns. And then right. what was projected to because they knew it was going to drop after COVID, you know, cleared up a little bit, um, but it dropped a lot more than they expected it to. And so that shrink is causing them to have to cut <clears> a lot of jobs. Yeah. But the the problem with this and, and you know, we'll, uh, I'll just say it now. I, I guess I was going to save it until the Microsoft conversation, but it doesn't matter. Is like. We're at what, like. 5,000 something layoffs this year. They were like 10,000 layoffs last year and it's happening across the board. Like it's, it's every studio for the most part is laying people off to some degree, even like really small teams are laying off 10 people and it's 50% of their team. Right? Like this is, this is not a result of like exclusively a result of Embracer bought too many things and they couldn't figure it out. Like, yes, that's obviously a cause. It's not a, it's not exclusively being caused by, Oh, Xbox bought Activision Blizzard and there's redundancies. Yes, that is one of the causes but there's so much else going on that is causing this across the board and, and it's that thing of like if every studio is laying people off where do those people go like where do you find a job if every other studio that you would apply to is also laying people off and i know that they are hiring in different positions yeah but it's like you might be able to find a spot but like we're talking about fifteen thousand people laid off in the last 18 months or something like that like we're, mm. th these are not even exaggerated numbers these are pretty pretty close to, yeah. <laughs> to the actual numbers you gotta be, yeah. uh it's and, and it's 5, like 5900 this year alone so you better you gotta yeah. be right yeah and, and it's like okay so where do they go because we're, we're just going to be bleeding talent out of the games industry because like some of these people are going to go and they're like oh you know screw it i'll go become a banker or like i'm gonna go work in, in, in investment or something like i'll take my computer knowledge and take it somewhere else i'll take my uh graphic knowledge and i'll take it to i don't know television or film or I'll, I'll work for an ad campaign for something right like like these are people who are going to find jobs outside of the games industry and so we're just losing talent we are losing mm -hmm. people who might have made like the next huge game are just gone yeah, and so and then on top of that you're also you have to take into account the people who are coming up right now through you know the school system who who are like taking classes in ha learning how to do video games and it's like are they still going to want to apply to these jobs you know it's like am, am i still going to want to apply to work at a video game company right now when everyone's getting laid off and it's like even if i get hired how long am i going to stay there am i going to like if they ask me if i'm going to move is it a fair question for me to be like are, what are the likelihood that you're going to lay off my entire team in six months you know yeah like <laughs> like this is a situation where and it like and i understand all the economic reasoning for it and like i'm not even saying like this is this is rough <laughs> but like i understand parts of why it's happening but it's just like this is bad like this is <laughs> this is really bad and it's not just you know people are having their lives ruined left right and center it's 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 bad because like 
the industry as a whole is as a whole is going to suffer in terms of quality and content because of this it, it yeah. like this is this is going to be a really big problem for a very long time mm-hmm. um and i don't i don't know how they come back from it like i'm not saying you know i'm not doom and gloom like all oh, the industry is dead but it's like like this is this is bad <laughs> no, <laughs> like you're right people I mean, are losing their jobs everywhere <laughs> it's really depressing man and i mean all of us are i'm gonna guess most even in the chat we work our daily you know jobs or careers or whatever the case is and the one thing you obviously we want to have secure is our job i mean it it matters i mean the economy is crazy yeah to to not be able to have a secure future is is worrisome and you know to for these people to go through this is crazy and like you said we're losing such we're bleeding so much talent out of there we not only do they lose out on their career and possibly, like you said, have to shift to something else. Uh, I, I even saw Dev one time last year, I think, was mentioning something like moving into like graphic design or something like that for a yeah. website. So not only do we lose out on this talent, and he doesn't would rather do they lose out on their job, but us as gamers, we lose out on this talent that could have brought us, like you said, the next big thing. Now we will never see that future. And we'll never them. know even what it was. Like Exactly. It, it, there's no way of ever knowing. And, and it's... You know, honestly, I think we should just talk about the Microsoft thing now. And then, like, if we have time at the end, I, I, we can cover the four other stories that I have in the rundown real fast at the end. Yeah. Because, like, this is all part of the same conversation. Yeah. Like, this morning, I woke up and I found out about the Xbox layoffs. And, and like, I have friends who work at Microsoft Studios, I, several of them. And I, and I reached out to them. And one of them, I'm not going to name names because I, I don't think it's my place to do it. But, like, I was like, hey, are you and your team okay? And he was like... I don't know. I'm going to find out in 15 minutes oh. or like I texted one of them and it was his day off and he didn't know yet. Man, <laughs> like he had just woken scary. up and he, and he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, oh, so he had heard I'm the sorry. news. Like I was the one who broke it to him Whoa. that they were and he's fine. He found out, you know, several hours later that he's he's fine. Like no one I know personally was laid off. It was, I mean, it was 8%. So Microsoft laid off 1900 people today or right? are, are uh, yeah. 8%. But but yeah. 8%, okay. Um, and so like there were people I was personally reaching out to to be like, hey man, are you okay? <laughs> and and I was very lucky and they were very lucky. You know, 8%, you know, that's not, it, it doesn't sound like a high chance that you're going to be laid off, but it's scary. If you know that 8% of the people that you work with are going to be gone tomorrow, it's like, there's always going to be that that shot of like, is it me? Is it my team? Is, am I considered redundant now? Like, like that's terrifying to be like, uh, I don't think I've sh- shared this story on, on any podcast, but I was laid off uh, le- like early last year. I worked for a, a stock brokerage that I, I guess I probably shouldn't name if I'm talking smack about them. Um, but they laid off my entire department. It was like 90 people. Um, and they were like, they told us at the time, which by the way, we were contract workers. So when they, they didn't like lay us off, technically, they just didn't renew our contracts, which also meant we didn't get severage and didn't, or severance and we didn't qualify for unemployment, which was awesome. Wow. Um, but uh they told us at that time before all these layoffs started happening they were like hey guys just like it's a stock brokerage their whole job is to predict the future and they're like the economy is going to get really bad and we are backsliding into a recession and there are going to be layoffs everywhere we're really sorry we have to put a hiring freeze on to protect ourselves which means that we cannot renew your contracts uh, and i and i was like oh at the time i was just pissed i was like oh screw you guys like you don't know what you're talking about like <clears throat> I'll be able to find a new job. I have not found a new job. I, like I work in retail right now. I went back to the retail job I had before and I'm really thankful to have that. I'm doing really well there. I love the people that I work with. Yeah. It's obviously not where I want it to be like long-term. It's not like a place where I wanted to make my career, but like everything sucks right now, right? Like, and, and they knew it back then. And I bet that these other, these CEOs of these big tech companies like Microsoft or whatever also knew it. And so like, I understand that like, a lot of the reason why they're laying these people off at Microsoft specifically is like there is redundancy there. We just bought a bunch of people, like a bunch of a bunch of teams, and some of these teams are redundant. And like because there is a recession coming, where we may have wanted to keep some of them, even though it's redundant, just you know maybe to slowly transition them into other departments or whatever. Like I don't know. Like they were trying really hard. It seemed seemed like at least to not lay people off because it has been a long time since acquiring Bethesda and they didn't lay anybody off. And there has been a long like, you know, it, they were talking a lot about it, like keeping them as like limited integration companies where they weren't going to, you know, have to remove these people. And it seems like because of the economic realities that, that we're facing right now, that they were like, 
like this sucks, but like we have to do this to protect ourselves. And like, and I get that on the corporate side of things. Like I understand that like there are real business reasons for why you had to do this, <laughs> but it's also like, Hey, 1900 people just had their lives completely uprooted. <laughs> Yeah, like altered. there's there's no way around sure. that like i i understand why it happened mm -hmm. it doesn't make it good it doesn't make it okay like True. this is like and i've seen both sides of this where people are like <clears throat> you know just like fully on the side of the corporation and they're like oh my god i can't believe people complaining about this like it had to happen i'm like okay we'll have a little bit of empathy and then i've seen people on the other mm -hmm. side where it's like oh my god i i hate microsoft i can't believe that they would do this they just yeah. spent all this money and they couldn't and it's like no like <clears throat> like it makes sense like we were like me and you and and people that we had on this podcast like we were talking mm -hmm. about this for a long time we were like yeah. when this acquisition was announced we we're like there are going to be layoffs like there are and i don't think any of us thought it was going to be 1900 people yeah but but we were we were saying from the start like hey this is going to end in a place where people lose their jobs like we knew that from the beginning yeah. um and it's like i don't think it's too much to be <clears> like cognizant of the real ramifications of why this happened and then also feel empathy for the people who lost their job but i've seen yeah. so much online of just like not being able to have two thoughts at the same time mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i mean i know exactly what you mean and that's part of the problem with the online discourse it's either one extreme or the other right i've seen it so many times i get into debates to debates with idiots and on different subjects of course and it's always it's tunnel vision for this one thing but you're right, you can see both sides. On an Xbox corporate side, you can understand it. But that doesn't mean you have to turn off your empathy for the people who are affected, right? Yeah. And then you look at it deeper and it, it starts to sink in too. And, and this is on the empathy side, where you see that these people have been let go, but then you see the salaries of those up top. And it kind of feels like, mm -hmm. well, well, couldn't you all have sliced off a bit of what you're bringing home to, to let these people live, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And have them, uh, have them have a, keep a job at the same time, also, too, I want to mention that, and I don't think a lot enough people kind of really put this into context. If Microsoft had not bought ABK, they probably would have faced more layoffs. It's actually. entirely, I mean, we'll never know for sure, but yeah. like it's entirely pro possible, even because mm -hmm. you're looking at it across the board. Like, this is happening at studios who were not involved in mergers. They're, it's happening to Embracer, who had a lot of really <clears throat> bad choice mergers. Like, it's happening everywhere. So, I don't think acquisition yep. by itself is like enough to point out. Obviously, like I said, yeah, yeah. a lot of the things that they said in their press release was like, hey, you know, we're cutting off things that are redundant, right? And like, maybe they would have kept those in a better economic situation. Maybe they wouldn't have. We, we won't know because that's not the world we live in. But it's like, hey, if if you have to really push to, to get every dollar and every cent right now, like, would a studio like Double Fine have survived this? Would a studio right. like Ninja Theory have been able to have gotten the funding to take the time to make Hellblade 2? Or would they have had to backtrack into like some more double A stuff that they didn't <laughs> really want to make? Would they have had to have layoffs? Like, like <laughs> we'll never know. But it's entirely possible, right? Like it's it's impossible to be like they, you know, they shouldn't have bought this team. Obviously, they should have used that money to do this or that. Like it's so right. it's so easy to sit back and like be this armchair quarterback mm -hmm. when the reality is like We'll never know. We don't we'll know. never know, we don't know what would have been better or what could have worked out. Exactly. All we know is that this is what happened and it sucks ass. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I think you hit it on the head. I mean, we, we don't know. Ultimately, like us discussing this here, I mean, we're at best showing an empathetic side to what's going on. We don't know the inner workings of all these things. The only thing we can point to, and of course, it's just optic wise, it looks bad for Microsoft, right? Only because. Oh, of course. Only because that they just got a. A near, they had a nearly well, they had a three trillion dollar uh valuation in the market and of course i think it went down and settled down under three million now three trillion rather so hearing that news the day before and then this news right after it's like wait yeah. a minute you all are worth three trillion yeah there's we, I, I, you know even without that there's no way to be like Hey, we just laid off nearly two thousand people. Like, there's right. no way to do that and not have a negative blowback on you. Nothing. Um, and I and I think that exactly. that's correct. And I don't think like that we know the people not personally, but we know the people who run Xbox and like they're real people. Like we get to see them be real people and and talk yeah. about the things that they care about. Mm -hmm. They're Sarah Bond and Phil Spencer and Booty. Like they did not make these decisions lightly. They. I'm sure feel like shit right now. Like I, I bet yep. they feel terrible. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, and like, you know, that's not to be like, Oh, woe is me. These people who got to keep their job get to, you know, feel bad about it. But like, there is no, <laughs> there is no reality where like 
this was something that they wanted to do. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I don't. This is not something that they wanted to do for sure. We've seen their their the very human side of of people in the top of Xbox, from Sarah to Phil to Aaron. You know, very much so. I think they're very human and empathetic too. They don't want this to happen. It's just part of the reality of what they they do with this corporation. I'm sure. You know, obviously, this is over Phil and team's head. Like, this is something Microsoft obviously as a whole did because it didn't just come from. Um, you know yeah for well, and himself because we, we saw was it last year microsoft did a bit did another big layoff that was for like the microsoft side of things yeah. i think yeah. i don't remember what that number was but i think it was also really high i think it was um, around a thousand i'm not oh well, close to and actually was, i knew some uh, yeah. i knew a few people were affected by that as well really personally oh, yeah but and i think they've well at least one of them i know for sure landed on their feet so that's the positive well, that's good but yeah man I, it's it's uh it's a it's a depressing thing you know what i mean i, I wanted to try to break this yeah. news up a bit with like like news of um some of the game releases but it's because i don't want the, the audience i know you guys hearing this and you're probably like ah this is a debbie downer thing and it is no i mean it's a bad day like i'm yeah. sorry like i was i was pissed about this all day there was some mm-hmm. other news that i was i was going to cover about a thing that's happening with vince mcmahon right now i don't know if you saw that like so many of the it. things that i'm passionate about have just been taking huge l's all day i've yeah. been in a bad mood since the second i woke up <laughs> yeah man and i get it and you got friends there too so it hits yeah different, i mean right? we both do and it's mm-hmm. it's like it's rough like it's scary it's scary to to be like yeah i don't know it's yeah. it, not having your job security in this economy is scary. and i wonder like what solution because I, I that's the thing i think of like right like what yeah. can be done about this? And it's not just oh, we gotta have a union. That's not going to do it. They, I feel it, like it'll help. Like having the yeah. ability to to have collective action, like True. that's that's going to help in situations like this. But it's yeah. not going to remove it. Like, exactly. Because you know, there's unions in a bunch of other industries, and we're still seeing huge layoffs. So across. True. Like there's there's unions in uh, my dad. My my dad uh, runs uh, or used to run. Uh, he was management for Yellow Roadway, a huge trucking mm-hmm. company. It was like the second or third largest trucking company uh, on in the America. planet. Oh wow, in the world. Um, <laughs> and uh, and it just shut down, and it, and it had unions, and it yeah. like it doesn't it doesn't matter because like you yeah. know sometimes the economy hits just wrong and things go wrong. like I, I think that was like fifteen thousand people lost their jobs, including my dad. Wow. Uh, and he's he you know he found a new job. He's doing all right. He was probably pretty close to retired anyway so yeah. so i think he's honestly just picked up the new job as, as something to, to do because he's, he's not the kind of guy who can just sit at home and watch tv all day yeah. he's a busy uh, body, just, yeah yeah I, yeah I really respect that about him um yeah. but it's just like it's a, like those unions can only do so much the and, union, you yeah. can only do so much i, I they can, wonder they can like, help but they can't stop it. exactly and i wonder though like solution wise because we look at the salaries of people and i'm not i don't I hate to say it, say it like this but I wonder then, because even I look at the CEOs and such, and maybe there needs to yeah. be a, some type of reconciliation on how much the the higher ups are being paid versus yeah. I think there the should workers. be there should be, and well, and th- this will never happen because the people who make the decisions, you know, yeah. would be the ones hurt by it. Exactly. But there there should be some rule about a certain percentage of money that the person at the top cannot make a certain percentage more than the person at the bottom. Like right. that should make that should be. Part. and i i don't know how that works yeah i don't know if it even makes sense i'm not an economist yeah there's got to um, be some type of legislation but the problem is the capitalism capitalistic system we're in won't allow for that yeah and here's the thing about okay here's the thing right because uh, <laughs> i think capitalism works for the most part right like I, i'm mm-hmm. not going to be out here and be like oh we should change the economy <laughs> entirely there are aspects of it though that are dog shit True. and i will not sugarcoat that at right. all the fact that like boards of Amen. major companies have this Amen. this like nothing is ever enough mentality of like we always have to grow we have to be growing constantly and by a certain percentage every year or people are losing their jobs like Boy. that's wow. insane like if you you're looking at like apple or, or whoever who have damn near monopolies over their industries and it's like we need to keep growing and it's like where <laughs> you have sold products to everybody. What do you mean that right. you're going to lay off 5,000 people if you can't sell another 7 million phones this year? Like, what do you, like, where are you growing? What, what do you, like, <laughs> you're already the most money-making company on the planet. 
what do you mean we have to continue growing or we or we'll have to let people go like no yeah just be sustainable like exactly. why is it so much more important to be bigger and bigger and bigger than it is to just be a company that works and gets the job done and gets to pay these people and like if you grow then you can hire more people and then these people can be taken care of too like why is it so why is it so often that these companies are like because we have to continue to grow because nothing is ever enough we're going to hire another 10,000 people and then when this bet doesn't pay off we're going to fire 11,000 people yeah exactly. like why does that keep happening why is that okay like mm -hmm. what what do what can we do to make that not be true but it's happening everywhere and not just video games not just tech it's every industry this happens and it's like this is the this is the the bad part of capitalism like exactly like the there are way. aspects of it that work yep. where it's like you know it, it allows for upward mobility it allows for people to create a company and grow and like jump up in strata of, of your like there are so many positives to capitalism that we just don't really see because what we're seeing on the news all the time is like hey um apple made a bet with 10,000 people's lives and, right. and now they and it didn't work out yeah, yeah. and <laughs> that's, that's just like it typically falls down on the little man that's that's the bad part about it typically it doesn't hit those at the top it's always us and that's why no, it yeah. hurts so bad right because we can relate directly to that you know what i mean and this and like we said this economy is, is suck suck sucks right now you it's bad we we would all every, almost everyone if you're not making a certain amount you I mean you almost live in paycheck to paycheck it feels like you know what i mean because or you have to work multiple jobs or shack up with somebody else and you know a friend yeah. or, or whomever it, it it's just not as great as it could be and uh, i mean our cost the cost of living is insane versus oh, yeah. versus my, what we even my make rent is like fifteen hundred dollars that's Man. more than i make on one paycheck Come right on. now that's crazy like I, i'm paying a paycheck and a half on just my rent and then that other half paycheck has to pay for all of my other bills and all my other needs right now i am breaking even and oh, i work see. overtime every week i work like 40 plus hours every single week i bust my ass and it's like it's just not enough right yeah and, and it's like i had a job that paid better but then this happened <laughs> mm -hmm. right and it's like and and you know from my lips to god ears like I, i'm i'm uh i'm hoping for a promotion soon but I, i've been busting my ass to get even to that and it's like i i look at it right i graduated with an engineering degree i graduated on the on the dean's list like everything should work should be like i should have the best bet of this working out for me right like I have, a, I have a good degree. I had good grades. Not to mention the fact that I'm a straight white guy, right? Like, like the, the <laughs> world is built for me to have a job, and it's I didn't not mean to working. Laugh at that. No, yeah. you're, but you I get what laugh. you mean. Cause, cause I get what you mean. Like the the world has been built in an unfair way that should benefit me, yep. and it's not even enough. Yep. You're right. <laughs> so how does this work for a, a single else. black mother exactly. who's working at at a drive through or something? Like, yep. like it. I don't understand. Point. Like I'm making ends meet barely. And and I'm like, yeah. Like, how is it like, yeah. <laughs> and a system you're saying basically is catered to help you, but it, you're right. I, I get what you're saying. 100%. And it's not just the situation, obviously of the gaming industry, but just, I guess of the world itself and uh, America is particularly, particularly in itself. It's, it's it's unfortunate man and i, I don't want to be a debbie downer about the situation but this is all bad in a way you know what i mean it's not really a positive to look at again i will say though had microsoft not uh, bought or acquired abk they probably would have had more people laid off it's, only, it's entirely only, possible only silver lining i can possibly finding that find in this is that not more people more people didn't lose their job you know at least yeah uh, theoretically. Well, and that's that's also part of what they said in that uh, gamesindustry.biz thing. Not that specifically, but they were like, the way around this is through divestiture, which means, you know, selling your company. Right. Or selling parts of your company. Uh, and it, it's like, okay, we well, got to sell them to somebody and hope that that somebody can take better care of them, you know? And, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know necessarily that it's that like the ABK thing, 100%, they would have had the same layoffs. I'm sure they would have for sure had layoffs. I will never be able to... I don't even necessarily want to go into the time machine and figure out, you know, the number that Bobby Kotick would have come up with of people to fire from ABK. Um, 
there's a high chance that it would have been more, but who's to say? But like a lot of, like I said earlier, a lot of the smaller teams, who knows how they would have survived this? Like a, like a double fine, like a, like, like a, a oh God, what is compulsion it? Compulsion or America? compulsion. Yeah. 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 Like, some of these smaller teams it's like would they have even been able to survive this would have they been would they have been able to find a publisher that would have taken the chance on their game in this time period right like like there's so th there's so many just stressors in this right now where it's it's like being acquired gives you a lot of financial stability and i know that we're looking at all these layoffs right now and and saying like i can't believe that they would do this and it's right you know what you're totally justified to feel upset about that especially if you're one of the people who was affected by it but at the same time it's like how well would that have company done if they didn't have the backing of Microsoft? Like, right. where would they be right now if they didn't have the backing of, yep. I mean, you know, Embracer is, I think, the outlier here because they don't have any backing. Yeah. <laughs> they just bought a bunch of shit and stuck it Man. in a bag together and they were like, maybe it'll work out. And, and it didn't. And they had a deal with somebody um, in place, at least a handshake deal, and that fell through. So Yeah, and that fell through too. And yeah. it was just like, so like, yeah, it, we'll never know. But yeah, I I tend to kind of agree with you where, where it's like, I don't necessarily think like, I don't necessarily think that consolidation is like the best thing in the world. Uh, like obviously <clears throat> a bunch of the people that were laid off today were laid off because they were in redundant fields. You know, like that's so maybe this just changed which groups of people would have been laid off. Maybe right. it would have been, you know, I, who's, I don't know. I don't know. And we'll never know. But like, I, I think that it's really short sighted because I've seen this a lot today of like, I can't believe that they bought this company and then laid people off. And it's like, yeah, it's very, come on. Like, that's it's like it's not what they set out to do clearly yeah and it's just a result of what's going to happen when you have redundancies in, in any company yeah and, and it's like i do think that this that there, there would have been layout 100 percent, no doubt there would have been layoffs at abk regardless it may have been different people it may it was it would probably have been a different number of people we'll never know if that number was higher or lower right it, i think it's i think it is ludicrous to sit back as as a person who works in retail like myself I think it is ludicrous to sit back and be like, I understand this business better than the people who run it. Wow. I can't believe it. Like I like seeing that this thing that didn't work out and was really bad and it sucks. It, I think it's ludicrous for so many people on Twitter to be like, I could have handled it better. And it's like, no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. <laughs> like this is a bad situation everywhere. Are you telling me that every single person at every single one of these studios where layoffs has happened, like you could do it better than all of them. Every single one of those people, you, you who work it, Denny's <laughs> could have run this company better. No, you couldn't have. Right. I'm sorry. Not at all. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I I guess I want to move on to the thought of, uh, or at least the talk of Mike Yabara on this yeah. situation. So I'm this, actually surprised by this. That surprised me too. I think because obviously we had the Odyssey game, but they were working on Blizzard was working on it was canceled just to give more context to the situation. So that was canceled and that team was all let go. So the entire team and that that survival game they were working on all gone and canceled. Yeah. Very unfortunate. And then we see Mike Ybarra. So there had been speculation about this and it, you know, we were uncertain as to, or well, at least we were uncertain as to what the situation was, why he suddenly abruptly left too. Uh, because uh, typically these things don't affect somebody in his position, right? It's because he was the well, he's the uh, chief, uh, the uh, what was I forgot his exact title. Like bar, he was like president of something, right? I think he, yeah, you're right. Um, what is it? I just saw it too a second ago. Uh, what else? Was I gonna say? Yeah, he was. Was it just president of Blizzard? He was the president of Blizzard. That's correct. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we see that he had departed, of course, and it was speculation, at least, because uh, Jason Schreier again had reported that in a note from Matt Booty, he said that yeah. Ibarra chose to leave his position as president of Blizzard. But in November at BlizzCon, Ibarra told Schreier that he wanted to stay for the long haul. He said, quote, I someone will drag me out of Blizzard. That's Ibarra told me. That's how yeah. long I will be here. So it's odd to see that, and then all of a sudden he's leaving. But then you had a comment from Matt Booty after the situation to clarify, and he says, in addition to the events today, Mike Ibarra and I have been discussing his future and some of his personal passions for some time. As many of you know, Mike previously spent more than 20 years at Microsoft. Now that he has seen the acquisition of 
through at Blizzard's as Blizzard's president, he has decided to leave the company. So, yeah, it seems like, I mean, we could speculate, of course, and my speculation would be that he must have saw at least the writing on the wall or saw that these people were being let off and let it let go. And that didn't sit well with him. That's my only thought because it's possible. Yeah, that's my only thought um, because it seems like, why did you suddenly do that? after making a statement and clearly we saw even when they were introduced and they showed Phil and team meet up with blizzard yeah. staff he was he seemed very happy he brought well, him on stage that, and you know there's also the aspect of this that i didn't think about until right now where i forget the exact number but activision blizzard ballooned in size during the acquisition they acquired like, they are hired i think like two or three thousand more people from the time that the acquisition was announced to the time that it closed and so i almost wonder if it was like if a lot of it was like hey this isn't what we bought <laughs> you know what i mean like i almost wonder if there's an aspect of that yeah but but to go back to the jason schreier thing it's also like so he because i saw that tweet you're talking about where he was like you know i was surprised that he uh was removed or stepped down or whatever uh, because of this comment that he made at BlizzCon. But then I also saw another thing also from Jason Schreier where he was being interviewed, uh, I think, for Bloomberg, where he was talking about how he, he wasn't surprised that he was let go because of, he had like ruffled some feathers or something. I forget exactly what he said, but it's like, I don't know what the order of those two things coming out was or if he like learned more stuff between one thing to the other thing or what. Um, but yeah, there's definitely going to be like information that comes out about why Mike left and or potentially was fired yeah um yeah definitely yeah, there's, we'll see, there's we'll see more to this out. story and it, i want to know it it has to be now i i had heard behind the scenes and i was corrected i don't know if this is true but speculation was that mike yabara didn't get along with phil and they had beef Possible. that's what i had heard and that because of that he wasn't all too happy with being back with microsoft in general then that was uh you know somebody in it you know source at least i don't want to you know go too yeah. far with it like i got my sources but this person that i do know has contact with microsoft and such he corrected me and said no that was they squashed it a long time ago apparently so they did have beef of what it sounded like what he was telling yeah. me but that had been handled and squashed and that wasn't the reason why so i don't know what it could be yeah i mean i feel yet. like it would have had to have been yeah a hell of a beef or somebody did like completely quit their job over it you know or to quit their job over it twice which i guess is what the uh, the presumption is that he left to go to blizzard because he didn't want to be with phil and then right. also quit again from blizzard because he didn't want to be with phil like that's a lot that's a lot uh, that would have to be one hell of a beef that would have to be like you slept with my wife level beef <laughs> and uh <laughs> right. and i just don't i just don't see that being the case i don't i don't i don't know either men so I, I cannot speak to it, but like it's just something about that doesn't vibe right. Yeah, I, I feel like it had to have been something else. It definitely right. I I wonder. If, I'm sure like or a combination this, of things more likely. Yeah, and it seems like with Microsoft, this they're so leaky. We'll probably hear that information anyway at some point. Like oh, we'll hear it tomorrow. <laughs> we'll exactly. hear, we're at the second the the second we stop recording, it'll they'll just exactly. will tweet something breaking. Out. Right, we will probably yeah. hear about this uh, some type of expose or tell all or something by yeah it would, honestly it'll actually probably be jason schreier because it seems like he's right in the middle of it yeah and he spoke on that too saying that you know kind of going to what you had mentioned uh with uh the people being let go that he said these xbox layoffs are such a mess that staff across activision blizzard are texting him right now to trying to find out if they had even been impacted nearly two thousand jobs cut and people now yeah just which like i don't wait. know I don't know yes. why they would think that Jason Schreier would know better than them, but uh, yeah, right, right. But, How would he know more than you would, or, or yeah. the company? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, but, but also like you know, one I saw one of, one of our friends. I, I again, I won't name him. Tweeting a bunch today about like, like he was pissed about this and and completely justified. And I think one of the things he tweeted was like, I can't believe that the news came out before the email. Mm -hmm. You know, this uh, everyone will find out by the end of the day thing is is bunk or something like like. And, and I, I feel that. I feel that emotion. I really get that. Like, yeah. it, it, like I said, it was only 8%, but even still, yeah. like, knowing that, like, if someone pulled up, a, like, pointed a gun at you and said, there's 8% chance I'm going to shoot you, you would be shitting your pants. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Uh, it's only 8% chance that I might blow your head off. Oh, yeah. oh. That's not We're playing Russian roulette right yeah. now. Yeah. Not bad odds, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, like, I completely get it. Um, yeah. But damn.
Yeah, but you know, some comments in the in the uh, chat I do want to uh, highlight on a hole. That's a interesting name. Uh, what on oh. a on a hole, and you know exactly what it's playing to when he says it that way. <laughs> on a hole. Uh, he says not everyone working on a survival game was let go. Thank you for that clarification. He says oh, some okay. of the people moved on to gotcha. or shifted to different uh, projects. projects. So that makes in sense. Development. Thanks for that. I thought they were all let go. Uh, and Boba said he Boba said see Boba said exactly what I was highlighting that I, that I was told is that they've always had a question if there was a beef between them. So yeah, that's what I had heard. And then I yeah I don't know yeah and. Abdel said he was blocked by Schreier. Who hasn't been at this point? Abdel. The only Jason reason Schreier oh, blocked me when I was in middle school. Did he? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I was in. Middle, I think <laughs> I don't remember what he's had me blocked since like 2010. Wow. I don't remember why? Wow. Um, oh, he's notorious for so. he doesn't waste time. He'll get you. But I haven't said anything to him, so I kind of I saw I know how he moves, so I just kind of look at his tweets and keep it moving. I don't reply to him. That way he can't block me. Right? He doesn't know. Uh, so yeah, I. He blocks everybody, so I'm not surprised. He said he think it might have been about the Final Fantasy 16 with Nick's special Nick tweet. Uh, yeah, yeah. The only way to, to avoid that ban hammer, yeah. Abdel, is to not say anything to him at all, I guess. Uh, but Boba said, uh, make a sock going. account that's not blocked <laughs> by anybody. Just never tweet anything. Right, don't say anything. Be quiet, silent, like uh, that game you were playing. That way he won't find you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But he says, uh, Boba says, our going to or going to Blizzard was a strategic takeover move. I've heard that actually. That that oh, that so people are like, theory, oh, right? I bet he, he's going off to Sega now. He's yeah, exactly. From the inside, I don't know. That's kind of tinfoil hat. It it's, is tinfoil. Uh, it's it's a yeah. fun tinfoil hat, but yeah. uh, that would be interesting. But yeah, that, I mean, we as, I do remember when they were acquired, people were kind of highlighting that too, like, oh, mission accomplished. Uh, oh, Mike yeah, because of him and, like, Rod Ferguson. Exactly. Like, both of them. Yeah. So, well, yeah, that's, I, it's unfortunate. But, yeah, Mike Yabara, Mike Yabara leaving like this. I believe, from what I was told, too, that he kind of helped help hold things together during the yeah. whole debacle with Bobby Kotick, right? So this yeah. is a well, and I know major that, loss, for sure. I don't know, like, specifically his work or what changed. Like, I'm not the biggest Blizzard fan. Um, but I know Jez Corden is, and he's pretty upset that that yeah. Mike Barr is gone. Oh, uh, I don't know specifically why. I, I could probably reach out to him and ask him, but I, I know that he's really upset about it. You know, I was tempted to actually hit him up and ask, but I didn't think he would actually tell me. So I, I definitely get what you mean. I saw his tweets. Uh, Jazz, he's was, livid. Yeah, he was pissed. Yeah. He actually, I think he was so, he got so pissed that he he, he started, you know, saying just he started like stuff. <laughs> Yeah. He started like backtracking on some of it because he realized that he was like a little bit out of pocket. Yeah, he was being a little too much, right? Like, because he even said, I wouldn't be surprised if Blizzard closed down. It's like, okay, don't. Come on. Did he say that? Yeah, yeah. he did. I, yeah, I mean, like, I get the emotion behind it. But... Yeah. So you could tell it hit him because actually, in actuality. But Blizzard's like his favorite thing. It's in the his world, favorite so thing, I, exactly. I completely so... understand why exactly. he was upset about it. Yeah. So that, he had just, he was being dramatic. But I get it, right? Like, you, you this is not a good situation. And. But he he alluded to somebody asked him he said well why did you know i guess they asked why did microsoft do this such and such thing and his response was because microsoft are idiots so i can <laughs> only assume that microsoft made some misstep or something that cost them mike yabara that's what it sounded like jazz was alluding to and yeah. i'm sure he'll allude it's possible yeah he probably will tell us what's up once he finds out more information it seems like he knows some stuff and yeah jazz oh it's a foot race has... between him and jason Schreier, oh yeah but jazz <laughs> jazz is motivated yeah <laughs> motivated jazz is going to find out for sure yeah I, I think uh he knows more about the situation than we know so far so i'm definitely going to guarantee to him yep yeah but uh i want to try to end this on some positive stuff because we are close to that time uh Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I will highlight some of the game releases that we had. Um, sorry yeah. for that. Sorry for that chat. I know it's a lot to take in as far as the drama because hey, you know sometimes yeah. weeks are bad, sometimes weeks are good. Absolutely, we're here for the good and the bad. You take the good, you take the bad, and then I forgot the rest. The facts are lie. Anyway, <laughs> Life Could Dragon Infinite Wealth uh, scored a 91 on Metacritic with 29 reviews. Ooh. Metacritic 29 reviews at 91. Open Critic 90, 47 reviews. It is. The, as, far, as far as I understand, it is the highest scoring game ever for Ryugo Kotaku. Their, their, their highest ever scoring Metacritic for them. Yeah, it's it's the best rated Yakuza game of all time. Crazy. Um, uh, I didn't think it was going to land that well after seeing some of the gameplay with the dolphins yeah. and all that. And I was like, ah, it, no way. 
and sure enough it landed well so yeah but uh shout out to them i, I do want to get it but i'm so far behind man i'm on yakuza 3 like i played through those games are long they're yeah. very long those oh, games yeah, yeah they're, they're a joke i played through kiwami i played through zero kiwami kiwami 2 and then uh now i moved to three and it's like okay this is a lot to get through to try to get up to current so i want to get through i hate going out of order so i have to play through those first to move up to this but that's um, fair yeah and tekken 8 reviews came through tons of great reviews also, yeah, also had like a 90 yep 91 i think oh. is what i had written here 91 on metacritic and open critic so uh way to go what a win for fighting game fans exactly they, it, they they were eaten last year mm -hmm. and, and i'm glad that they're continuing I, i'm not a fighting game person i don't really care yeah um but i'm glad that that fighting games are back like it uh, me too uh, it, there, it was a long time where there was just like not anything like yeah. remember when the best fighting game we had in a year was like marvel uh ultimate alliance or not ultimate alliance uh was it marvel vs capcom ultimate oh. or something and everyone was like pissed at it yeah i remember yeah it's definitely a good bounce back i mean you had street fight street fighter and mortal kombat one last year and now we got this i thought it might have landed last year Tekken, but it was close yeah. it was really close obviously it just it's just like now. the um lord cog is just having a ball oh yeah today. <laughs> With the, I, like these are yeah. two of his favorite things on the planet tekken and, and specifically like a like a dragon yep uh not yakuza but like the new ones oh yeah i saw somebody put uh, him him his head on on uh what's the neat the new guy i forgot his name oh uh, uh ichiban is it ichiban yeah. yeah had his head uh they put superimposed lord cog's head on him riding yeah. on a dolphin well, him, <laughs> and, uh, him and uh what's maddie. his name yeah maddie yeah uh who man, i would love to have them on the show someday I think oh man great. i would too actually i'm pretty um, sure i can get cog i've talked to him a few times he's actually on, the, on. yeah let me reach out to get him on. i'll do that i'll do that uh because i think they're both great i love them I agree. uh Good honestly people. defining duke one of my favorite podcasts yeah. um but but no they have a they have a running like debate between like because maddie's like he's like an old yakuza head where but cog's like kind of newer to it and so maddie loves kiryu and like cannot stand ichiban and uh and cog is kind of the opposite he he doesn't hate kiryu but he's just like nah ichiban's the goat uh so it's i i, I look forward to this week's defining duke where he's gonna be like so my boy got the best grade in the class huh <laughs> 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 yeah um shout out to great monad that's all good brother he says sorry i'm late uh his net is messed up right now yeah no no worries brother don't worry about it yeah, no worries. And listen, if I can miss a whole week like that, you being late is nothing. So, hey, thank you for being here and holding us down, brother. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, so a few things in the chat. Let me see if I can highlight this. Uh, Jax, is this is Jax? By the way, is this a super chat? Because he said he put a super chat through, but it didn't come through. And even on yeah, my that side, sometimes. Yeah, it happened to me once. So I was I forgot who I was super chatting, but it didn't pop up. So, Jack, sorry that it didn't pop up, brother, but I hope this is what you actually wrote. So I'll read yeah. it here. It says, today is a bad day, but things will get better. I wish the best for those 1,000. Well, I don't want to say it like that. 1,900. Because it sounds so much more dramatic when you say those 1,000. Uh, 1,900. Yeah. I think 1,900 sounds like a bigger number. But yeah, it? either way. I, I mean, know. it's a big number. It is a big number. Yeah, no matter how you way. say it. Yeah. <laughs> But he says, uh, my, I wish the best for those 1,900 people who lost their jobs. Absolutely. We all do for sure. I'm certain. Uh, oh, and Abdul said he just downloaded Infinite Wealth and on the Ally. It runs great. Okay, I got to check that out. He said FSR 3 and Frame uh, Generation for all save with Xbox 2. Okay, hey. Now, see, Abdul, I, that's dope. And he said he played through all the Aquas of Games last in 2021. Dope games. I agree with you. I uh, Maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe that will help if I actually just yeah. put it to my ROG and play it while I'm on the go, too. That'll when you were playing, because you, you said you're up to three now? Did yeah. you play Zero, Kiwami 1, Kiwami 2, or did you play Zero and then like Old 1, Old 2? I, I played the Kiwami. So I played Zero, Kiwami 1, and 2, and then Well, you know, three. in the original English dub of Yakuza 1, hmm. uh, what's his name? The guy with the eye patch and the snake jacket? Oh, uh kiryu chan what's his name yeah. uh my, my, my it starts uh, with an M. Uh, majima? majima 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 there you go uh majima was voiced by mark hamill what he was voiced by mark hamill in the original like like joker mark hamill really <laughs> in the original english dub of yakuza one yeah what i didn't know that yeah that's pretty dope yeah no that game actually had like a, a 
kind of nuts voice cast uh, for no reason because no one played it back then. <laughs> That's actually it fits him though because Mark Hamill was obviously the Joker, right? So I can see his. Oh, you crushed it! Yeah, yeah, I can see him doing that pretty well actually. I remember playing it back in the day, and I just like didn't get into the rest of the franchise for whatever reason because I was like you know ten or whatever, yeah, and didn't have money. Um, but yeah, it, he was eating. He, he was eating the, all scenery the scenery up. Yeah, I gotta check that out, man. I gotta look that up now. I'm glad you told me about that. Now uh, Majima is crazy, and so what better person to get than Mark Campbell to, yeah. to cover that? That's that's dope. Um, uh, and I, I don't think you can get any worse than going to Young Gay. Uh, so, anybody, 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 yeah, I mean, I like Young Ye well enough, but yeah, he was not, he was not getting the job. Not at him. all. No, but here, listen, look, listen to this voice cast. That's uh, so, uh, Michael Rosenbaum, who was Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor in yeah. Smallville, and he, I think, also voiced The Flash in Justice League. He did. You got uh, Eliza Dushku playing Yumi. Uh, I forget exactly where she's from, but that name is super familiar. You had Michael Madsen. You had Michael Madsen, yeah, Elisha Dushku. I think she played in like what was it, Dark Angel or something like that. I think it was, and a bunch of other uh, like. It says here she's known shows. for Bring It On. <laughs> oh yeah, she was in that. Yeah, that's, I, don't know, I didn't watch those movies. I don't know why they named that as like her highlight, but yeah, yeah, she played uh, in a bunch of other things. Mark Hamill and Dwight Schultz. Uh, yeah, it's just like this voice cast goes way hard for no reason on the english person she she played in uh what was that movie wrong turn yeah yeah I she, see that here. oh you know what she, wasn't she the daughter in true lies yeah she was she was in buffy i remember buffy she was in buffy the vampire slayer yeah 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 so stuff like that yeah true lies after she was the daughter i'm pretty certain of that but yeah but uh michael madsen being it that's crazy absolutely insane voice cast for yeah. a game that nobody played back in 2005 when it came out that is yeah that in is America, insane. At least. yeah like i wonder how much must it have been to get them for that that's, yeah yeah anyway yeah. but no that's dope uh but yeah uh so two great games dropped right now looking looking like early game of the year contenders already and uh, i'm going to add prince oh of yeah Persia tekken 8 is fighting game of the year for sure like oh, i don't yeah. even know what other fighting games are coming out this year i don't either i think king of fighters them. i think they have a king of fighters um oh yeah maybe i, forget what I don't think was. that's going to beat a 90 was it 91 93 i don't think it, it will either yeah, yeah I, I don't think I, it's I it. you know I, speaking of king of fighters I, I could never get into that series i've always wanted to but i just it, yeah, I only it doesn't played, connect like, with me I, don't, I played like King Fighters 94 or something. Like I played one of them that was like old, old. And I, and yeah. I liked it well enough, but I'm just not a fighting game guy yeah. at all. Man, I grew up playing those games with my uncle. So I played like Street Fighter 2. Like we would like Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Super. Like we would always go at it. My boy was Ryu or Ryu and his was Ken. And, you know, we just, Hadouken, Hadouken, Shahrukh. We going at it. Like my uncle was so infuriated. If he would lose to me, he would throw that Nintendo controller so hard and crack it to pieces. But he was talented, so he would m meld it back together with his soldering iron after the case and fix it. <laughs> it was uh, it's hilarious. Oh, no. And I knew it was coming because he started cursing up a storm. I'm like, uh-oh, maybe, uh -uh. maybe I shouldn't win this round. But soon, sure enough, I win. Ooh, hey, crack. That's all you hear. But, uh, yeah. Guys, I'm about to break my controller again. I better throw. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> for real. Hey, so listen, we got to get out of here, guys. This is that time for sure. I want to thank all of you all in the chat for being here. Uh, Jax, again, I'm not sure if that was your super chat. Let me know if that was it, brother, because it did not pop through. It does not even show you on the uh, the user end as far as like even the chat revenue. It shows, uh, obviously, Adidas, my brother Adidas20 who posted his earlier in the show. But it doesn't show yours. So I hope that was it. Uh, for hopefully. But uh, I want to thank everybody in the chat for being here, holding us down. Uh, thank you to our mods and everybody else. I got to talk to you mods, by the way. because uh, And I, I've spoke with other people about this. But it's, uh, I want to do something special for you guys for holding us down. And, and not just here. You guys come through for the community and other chats as well. So I want to give a special thank you to Gray, to Yodani. To even to boba just for you guys for coming through and holding us down as you do so thank you for first and foremost and then uh 
I'll go to the other stuff some other time when I talk with you. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys. If you have not done so yet, hit the like button and subscribe if you like what we've talked about here. It was a little bit a bit of a downer in this one a bit, but it is it was necessary. Yeah. We had to talk. It's it's it is what it is. So uh, Danny, where can the good folks find you? What will you be up to? And uh, yeah, man, what will you be up to this week? Uh, you can find me either uh, working 45 hours a week and suffering uh, anywhere in your local retail store, uh, <laughs> or you can find me on Twitter at Daniel J. McG, uh, or on my personal YouTube channel of Daniel McG. Uh, I'm working on all kinds of content right now. I, I genuinely don't know what the next video is going to be. I'm working on one thing with a friend of mine, and then I'm always working on... I just I got so many plates spinning. We'll see, but I should have something up in the next four or five days. So nice, very nice. So you guys give Danny a, a follow there. I have his, his information inside of the description, of course, and I'll yes. try to add timestamps uh, later on. We kept it within two hours here, but it was just us we, solo. Yeah, we so. did good. Yeah, we did pretty good this time. Uh, myself, of course, Infinite Umbra or Umbra Infinite on Twitter X. You'll find me either way. And as far as what I have coming up the rest of this week, we have the Infinite Podcast myself. Hosted by Risk It for the Biscuit. Uh, that blue number. And tomorrow, actually, we'll have two guests. Uh, one being Colt Eastwood and uh, Lucius Augustus, who you guys may in the chat may have seen inside of other chats. Uh, we'll have them coming through tomorrow. So come through and uh, give us some support there. That'll be at uh, 7 o'clock EST, 7 o'clock PM EST to be exact. Uh, so check your times and coordinate. Uh, Abdul, it's four o'clock in the morning for you. Thank you for coming through, brother. I really Good appreciate to see that, man. Get the hay. <laughs> yeah, thank you, brother. Night owl, like myself. Thank you. Um, but yeah, that's it, guys. We will see you guys later. Excuse me, I'm burping up a storm because I had drunk some pop before the show. Uh, shouldn't have done that. <laughs> you guys uh, have a great night. We will talk to you later. <laughs>